This is the tale of Melon City, and it's my very favourite story of all. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there was a magnificent kingdom, and the kingdom was ruled by a rather tyrannical old king, who loved nothing more than being adored by his people. Now one day, when he was having breakfast, he had a spark of genius. He thought, well, I think I will build myself a huge imperial arch so I can ride up and down through it in my robes and my crown and be worshipped by everyone around. So plans were drawn up and finally the arch was ready. The king wasted no time putting on his finest royal robes and pulling his crown tight onto his head. He clambered onto his best stallion and led a grand procession to the arch. But as he went through it for the first time, the royal crown was knocked clean off the royal head. The king went berserk and he screamed, make a gallows and I will hang the man responsible for this tyranny. So a gallows was erected right next to the arch and the vizier said to the king, but your majesty, who should we hang? Who is responsible for this tyranny? And the king said, well, the architect, of course, because it is he who drew up the plans for the royal arch in the first place. So the architect was brought. And just as he was, just before he was led up the steps to the gallows itself, he said, your majesty, it wasn't me, the humble architect. It was surely the fault of the contractors because they misunderstood my plans. So the contractors were brought and they were led to the gallows, but just before they ascended the steps, they said, your majesty, it wasn't our fault. It was the stonemasons, because the stonemasons cut the stone all wrong. The king was getting impatient and the crowd was getting impatient as well. And the grand vizier said, your majesty, what shall we do? And the king said, well, find me the wisest man in the kingdom. And the wisest man in the kingdom was brought. And he said, your majesty, because he was very old, your majesty, it is surely the arch itself that is at fault because it is what knocked the royal crown off the royal brow. The king said, then we will hang the arch. And everyone looked a bit concerned because they knew there was no rope long enough, to, or strong enough even, to hang the arch. Now, the crowd were getting very impatient because they wanted a hanging. So the vizier had a bright idea. He said, your majesty, why don't we measure everyone and find the person of the perfect height and hang them? And we'll just say it was their fault. So everyone around about the arch and the gallows was measured, including the vizier and the king himself. Now, by chance, a very strange chance, the king was found to be the exact perfect height for the gallows that had been erected. And with the crowd baying for blood, someone's blood, there was no other choice but to hang the king. He went up the steps, weeping, and before he knew it, he was hanging from a rope. Now, in this kingdom, there was a strange and unusual tradition that whenever a king died, the new king was the first person who walked through the gates of the city the next morning, or that person could decide who would be king if they didn't want the job themselves. So the vizier and the group leaders of the court went to the royal gates the next morning and they waited for someone to come through. Now by chance, the person coming through, albeit backwards on his donkey, was a fool, the wisest, most stupid fool of all. And they asked him, hey fool, who do you want to be the king of this kingdom or you can have the job yourself? And the fool said, well, a melon should be the king. And he said a melon should be king because he liked melons very much indeed. And he said a melon to everything that was asked of him. 
So Amenon was made king of the kingdom. And that was many, many years ago. And if you go there now and you ask, who is the king of your kingdom? The people will say, Amelon is the king. 